today's modern world, there have been a lot of weird changes. Like for instance, the fact that Mazda is attempting to move up market for a more premium buyer. I guess they're tired of people joking about their car is only being driven by people who can't drive. So they decided to start where they should really start by replacing the CX-9, which was a family crossover made for mom to take her kids to school in, and it wasn't all that inspiring. And they've replaced it with the CX-90, which is a family crossover for mom to take her kids to school in. I joke, but it is more than that, because this is their first rear wheel drive, large platform in at least a while. And underneath the hood here, instead of some four cylinder sky active, four cylinder turbo sky active, four cylinder thing, they have a sky active engine again. Is this car even that different? It is more than just another sky active engine because it is Mazda's first inline six. For as far as memory serves, Mazda has never made an inline six car, and they especially have never made an inline six family crossover on a rear wheel drive based platform that is also luxurious inside and out. And it's mostly a really beautiful looking thing. The CX-90 again is the culmination of Mazda attempting to move up market to a more premium buyer than what they had before. Mazda has never had the worst reputation with anybody, but they weren't ever seen as a premium brand like Lexus or BMW, maybe even Acura. They weren't even to Acura standards. So this is Mazda attempting to fight back against those luxurious competitors that are a lot more expensive. And what better way to do that than by creating a new line of engines to put in a luxurious SUV, and those engines are silky smooth, straight sixes just like what you'd find in a BMW. Along with an inline six power plant, the Mazda CX-90 also houses their first, at least in America, plug-in hybrid powertrain, which uses the Skyactiv four-cylinder engine paired with an electric motor to produce around about the same power as the six-cylinder. But as we'll find out in a minute when we take the six-cylinder out for a drive, I think I would rather have the six-cylinder. This particular CX-90 is an upper-level Turbo S trim. And for car spotters, the way you can tell that it's a Turbo S is fender flares that are not plastic cladding. They're actually body colored. And on the back, the Skyactiv G logo is there, but the G is in red, just to drive home the point that this has a little bit more power. And that's basically all the Turbo S is. It has 340 horsepower, I believe, compared to the regular CX-90s 320 thereabouts. So it's a little bit more powerful and just looks a little bit better with some less plastic on the outside. It looks more premium, which is, again, what they're going after. The styling of the new CX-90 for me is sort of a mixed bag. Overall, I prefer the proportions of this to the CX-9 especially this long hood up here, which is sporty, houses that inline six, so it has to be long. The whole sculpting of their evolution of the Kodo design, which is also apparent in the current Mazda 3, characterized by just one line that moves all the way to the back, and it's just a really nice flow of the body, if that makes sense. But the back end is where I think the proportions kind of fall apart because the way it, the body moves up and pushes out, even almost past the actual bumper, gives it the appearance of that one dolphin that has like sonar or whatever. I, I don't know anything about animals. There's a dolphin, it has a big head. I'll flash it up on screen. You can, can you see the resemblance? It's odd, that's all. I'm not a big fan of this back end at all. Also, for Mazda's whole making less appear beautiful, the whole Japanese mastery thing, all that stuff works, except for in basic trims, this inline six badge is just black plastic. And this vent here isn't even real. Kind of goes directly against their design ethos, I think. It says inline six right here, which sort of reminds me of the 50s cars that would say V8 on the side, which is kind of cool. Overall, I think this plastic fake vent right here takes away from the whole simplistic, beautiful look. So I think 
that should just go and they should forget about that badge. And around the front, the very front of it with those headlights and the radiator grill, as Mazdas tend to be, is a little bit ungainly, but it's not horrible. Overall though, I think the best part of this car is easily the side and the proportions where the wheels are closer to the end of the car. It's a longer wheelbase than the CX-9. And I just love the look of that long hood. It looks really cool. I don't think it's a bad looking car. Definitely stands out more than the CX-9, so they did a good thing there. Coming around the back. Is it gone yet? Ah, okay, good. Let's pull these back real quick. Okay, I got it. As is typical for my videos, it's time to talk about practicality. But before we do that, again, if you see right here, I don't wanna have to look because it's got a pretty ugly butt. So yeah, right there, it says E Sky Active G, which is the name of the inline six. And it's red, the G is red. That's how you know it's a, the Turbo S. And no, it's not a Porsche underfloor storage. Um, there was a crowbar kind of thing. What is this for? What did he, th what does Mazda think their owners do in their spare time? Just break into cars? Let's see if we can, I'm not gonna do that. Although I am quite an idiot, so this could be like a completely different tool that's actually useful for something, but it looks like something to break into cars with and that's funnier, so. Um, this floor is also, there's no other word for it, um, not actually even like mounted to the car in any way. It's just, you can just pull it out. If you couldn't tell already, this is a third row vehicle. So there is a small storage area back here behind the third row of seats. It's not too bad though. You could fit some bags in there, groceries. It's good enough for everyday purposes. But if it's not enough, pull this loop here and you can just drop the third row of seats and you get a flat load floor right there, which is good. And that adds to the practicality. If you want to drop the second row, you can just go around, open the door, pretty easily just drop the second row of seats. Doesn't have power fold down seats, but not a big deal. And again, it's, it's pretty easy to just drop the rear seats manually. Does have a power lift gate which is good overall back here it's good enough for what you would expect from a car in this segment all right let's check rear seat practicality starting with the third row to get back here it's quite simple there is an obvious lever right here you just pull on it seat folds forward and then slides forward and you can just oh, it's very easy <sighs> toss yourself back here and then eliminate your leg room ah I am six foot three, so typically people of my size don't end up stuffed in the third row. But I have to say, despite the fact that I can't move my feet at all, and I have no leg room technically, and if I sit back, I have no headroom, at least I don't feel like I'm getting crushed back here like some third row mid-size crossovers. And I get a little USB-C charger to charge my devices and two cup holders just for me, which is nice. And on the side here, there's even a little climate control vent, tiny, and it looks like an afterthought, but at least it's there. And I even have a nice big third row window back here. So honestly, for short to medium journeys, I could sit back here and be totally happy, which is actually really impressive and surprising for me because I genuinely wasn't looking forward to stuffing myself back here. And now that I did, it's not too bad. And honestly, if you need more foot room, you can just put your foot up there into the second row passenger's lap if you want. Little plasticky, a lot of plastic actually. No wood or leather like you get in the first and second row. So you can definitely see where some cost corners were made. Who's going to be back here? Children. And children aren't really going to care about plastic back here. And if they barf on this part of the panel right here, then I imagine it's quite easy to clean. You get some Armor All wipes or whatever and you'll be good to go. So yeah, third row is 
quite comfortable, surprisingly comfortable. Let's check the second row. It's really nice that this door opens pretty much 90 degrees outward, which makes it easy to get in and out. And also it makes it easy to put my tripod here. So thank you Mazda for thinking of me. <laughs> second row. Ugh. Oh, look at that. I've got my own little captain's chair here, which is what this particular CX-90 is specced out with. It's not too bad at all. Maybe I can move the seat back. Look at that. All right, never mind. I can't complain about the lack of legroom because I found this magical bar underneath the seat and I slid my seat back a little bit. I have plenty of legroom. Sit back and I have a tiny bit of headroom. People over like six foot five might touch back here. And there's some feet room. I can't stretch out super far, but it's all right. Two cup holders down here in the door panel, but they're that kind of cup holder that you don't really trust. So wouldn't rely on those totally. And look at how gorgeous this door panel is. I mean, this is one good example of Mazda really making an effort to move up market, as you can see, because it's got this gorgeous brushed aluminum right here, real wood. And can we talk about the color of this interior? White leather seats and tan colored wood in beautiful contrast with the black everywhere else. In the center here, mounted to the driver's side second row of seats, I've got this wonderfully high quality looking cup holder arrangement here. If you don't wanna see that and you want easier access to the third row, like a pass-through. You just push these cup holders up and then you can fold it down. Also, in terms of equipment, this is available with heated second row seats and heated third row seats, which is really nice. I don't think this has either, but it's nice to know that you can get that. Instead, this has these two blank plastic buttons that would have heated, maybe even ventilated seats, but they don't. But it is nice for this segment to have a second row climate control system. It is only a single zone in this car, but it's nice to have that. And then upwards of that, you have two USB-C ports and some vents, which have this weird chrome surround on them to make them look more luxurious. And I'm, I'm not sure I'm getting fooled by that, but it's just nice to have climate control back here and vents. It definitely feels like a luxurious crossover in the second row. Again, you've got these gorgeous looking door panels with that not very trustworthy cup holder down at the bottom. The whole front row of this car is quite a lot different and more luxurious and sets it apart from, for example, your grandma's Mazda Millennia. This is a lot more classy, a lot more elegant. Everything you touch feels quite nice, higher quality. Not that, that's a little plasticky. Again, this wood is very gorgeous. This whole white interior itself is very beautiful and nice. I don't think it's gonna stop beeping. Can we, s thank you. You have Mazda's command control, which controls their infotainment system, which at face value isn't all that impressive, especially when you consider that this car is trying to be more upmarket and premium. This infotainment system just isn't up to standards for me. There's nothing really wrong with it. It's just that I think it could be more welcoming. It could look more like what BMW has or what Tesla has with widgets and things like that. So it does, when you look at the screen on this whole menu here, it just looks pretty uninspiring, but one thing that you have to give Mazda credit for is the fact that they put the screen all the way up here in the driver's line of sight because unlike other companies, Mazda sort of recognizes the irony of telling people don't ever use your phone while driving and then giving them a 10 inch iPad right here on their dashboard. So we have to give Mazda credit for the fact that they're really thinking somewhere on driver distraction and safety. I think that adds into the whole why it doesn't have color on the home menu, why it doesn't look too vibrant on the home menu, it's trying to not be distracting, which when you think about it, that is actually quite a good thing. Right there, I've got camera systems, like a whole 360 camera. It doesn't like have that cool moving around the car thing that the uh, BMWs have these days, but it should be good enough for most people. I've got hill descent control right there, which is good. Much better cup holders up here with tabs, which will 
hold your drink in a little bit better than anything that's back there. Forward from the gear selector, you have your My Drive modes, which in this car are sport, normal, and off-road, but there's also towing modes. There's also EV mode in the plug-in hybrid version. There's also charge mode in the plug-in hybrid version. I just keep coming back to the appearance of this interior. It's absolutely gorgeous, especially in this color. I love the white seats with this bronze strip in the middle. Looks very luxurious and premium. I make fun of the fact that the front of the car is a little ungainly and the back of the car is plain ugly, but when you're driving this car, you don't care about the design of the outside of the car, do you? You only care about the design of the interior. Well, I say that the styling on the outside doesn't matter at all until I direct your attention to the gauge cluster, digital gauge cluster, where in the center you have your radar diagram that shows you blind spots and lane keep assist. What is staring back at you? the back end of the Mazda CX-90, which is the worst possible part, and you're going to be looking at that the entire time you own this car, so you should hope that you like this car's butt because you're gonna be looking at it all the time. All right, let's look at that all-important inline six-cylinder engine, shall we? Um, well, where is it? I don't see an inline six-cylinder engine here. All I see is a plastic cover with six slots in it. There's no actual engine under here. You know what? Let's, let's do this. There it is. Uh, that is apparently an inline six cylinder engine. Doesn't look like it from where I'm standing here, but this is a 3.3 liter turbocharged inline six cylinder engine with a mild hybrid component. And again, in this, the Turbo S model, it is upgraded a little bit to 340 horsepower. It's a lot better sounding than the old four cylinder that was in the CX-9. Might not be as good on fuel, but for me, and from my perspective, I don't really care. I like the sound and the feel of the car first. But if you do care about fuel economy, things like that, there is the plug-in hybrid version of this car again, which has around the same horsepower and torque, but it's much more fuel efficient because it's a plug-in hybrid. I think it's high time that we experience this inline six cylinder engine and get out of this annoying wind. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time to drive the CX-90 Turbo S. That it sounds pretty good, especially for a Mazda crossover. You would never expect that to have wonderful straight six noises, but you know, lo and behold, it's a changing world, isn't it? There's a button here I can go to adjust my mirrors, but it is a Mazda and Mazda people don't use their mirrors. They just drive out into traffic without looking. So now we can properly drive it real quick. Beginning with the maneuverability in the parking lot. You can definitely feel this thing's size as you maneuver through parking lots, but it's not too bad once you come into it, expecting it to be a big three row crossover. We're gonna engage sport mode here. Feel that six cylinder turbo S goodness. And you can even hear the turbo noises. Turbo noises make it into the cabin, which is so hilarious and I love it. <laughs> I love that. But can we just talk about the way, can we just talk about the way this thing sounds? <laughs> you would never expect a big Mazda crossover to have, to make these amazingly smooth and crisp straight six noises when you put your foot down. It's absolutely out of this world experience. <laughs> I just had to listen again. Also, it has radar guided cruise control and auto steering, although the steering wheel is not capacitive touch. You have, so you have to give it feedback every once in a while, which is kind of annoying, but I prefer to drive the car, so I never use that kind of thing. But it's a useful feature for if you're in traffic all the time. Just driving along at regular speeds, very quiet. Again, this white interior helps the whole luxurious, light, spacious feel that this car is so good at. And then you can just relax driving home, 
even though this is a six cylinder 3.3 liter engine and there is a plug-in hybrid version available if you want to drive like ev only for shorter distances this is plenty of quiet enough for what you would expect <laughs> it's not super fast it doesn't feel super powerful it doesn't throw you back in your seat but man does it sing this straight six sounds so good i've driven both the turbo and the turbo s and there isn't a huge noticeable difference between the two cars in terms of performance and driving feel this does feel a little bit peppier but you can honestly go with either what you get with the turbo s is a cleaner more luxurious look on the outside, I would say. <laughs> it makes such a nice sound. It's, it's, I mean, it's on par with BMW's B58 straight six and the noise that that thing can make. And I don't know if they're pumping sound through the cabin. I don't know why they would in a car like this, who would want that? And I get that most consumers for this car don't really care about sounds. So let's talk about comfort, things like that. Again, very quiet, very luxurious, and over bumps, you feel the bumps a little bit. Driving along a road here, everything, here's a manhole cover. Yeah, like you feel it. You know that you just ran over somebody's dog, but it's not that uncomfortable. You don't get you know, pushed around too much. It hurts the dog more than you. And that's the most important thing when you're driving a luxury SUV. It corners surprisingly flat, but you definitely do feel a bit of body roll and a bit of weight, not a dangerous amount of body roll. It's more just like feedback, you know? So cornering is good, comfort is good, sound is good, either whether you wanna be quiet, just relaxing, drive home from work, or on a mountain road, listening to that straight six, you'll be happy either way. It just sounds good no matter what. A fantastic improvement on the CX-9. Let's listen to it one more time. And when you let off, when it changes gears and you let off the gas, you hear a little bit of a turbo whistle. It's just, so, this thing has driver enjoyment 100% down pat over all of its competitors. I would not expect to get into an Acura MDX and smile as much as I am behind the wheel of this car. So if you care about driving characteristics, CX-90 is definitely the way to go. So I think I'm gonna end that video there. Thank you so everybody for watching. I hope everybody has an awesome day. Bye-bye. For your radar things, you know, blind spot detection, lane. Well, that's good.